Greetings, friends. We'll try that again. Greetings, friends. Welcome to worship at First Congregational Church of Evanston, a congregation of the United Church of Christ. I greet you with joy on this Reign of Christ Sunday, a day we also celebrate as Thanksgiving Sunday. We are delighted that you are joining us in this sacred space with this blessed community of seekers and searchers. I also want to offer a special welcome to the Reverend Michelle Hughes for leading worship today while Pastor Jason is away on vacation. Reverend Hughes has served as an associate conference minister in both the Connecticut Conference of the, of the, uh, of the Illinois Conference. Reverend Hughes brings years of experience in community organization, pastoral care, program management, and nonprofit endeavors to her many ministries. And we also hope she brings some warmth this morning. I think she will. So welcome. Also, as we enter the peak season for colds, flu, and COVID, a warm reminder that masking is encouraged in the sanctuary as a practice of care for ourselves and one another. We encourage vaccinations and boosters, and if you're under the weather or have been exposed to COVID, we encourage you to stay home and participate in our worship online via Zoom. We care about your well-being, so please stay safe and be healthy. To those worshiping with us at home, we are glad you're beginning your Sunday morning with us. Ours is a faith community that believes in God's love, grace, and mercy. We believe all people are children of God, created in God's image, and equal in God's sight. We believe God loves us just as we are, and God calls all of us, sinners and saints, to reconciliation and transformation. So no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of life and faith, you are welcome here. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit for our responsive call to worship. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We gather to celebrate another day that God has kept us. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. We gather to bear witness to all that God has done for us. Come, behold the works of God. We gather to worship our God who loves and protects us.
Please join me in the call to confession. In the time of year when we are called to give thanks, how often do we instead congratulate ourselves and forget God? How can we celebrate our abundance while others live lives of scarcity? Let us now enter into the space of sincere contrition and ask for God's forgiveness. Would you please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin? Prince of Peace, we confess the barriers we build, the self-protective numbing we conjure to distance ourselves from the pain of this world. We harden our hearts to the suffering of others and behave in ways far from humane. Soften us, Jesus. Humble us with the compassion you exhibit from the cross. Guide us to live open and wholehearted lives as we attend to the needs of your worldwide family. Amen. From generation to generation, God's love overcomes human sinfulness. God is committed to fresh starts and new creations. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Psalm 92 is a psalm for thanksgiving. The writer summons us to sing praise to God with lute and harp and voice, for God is good. Hear now this wisdom from the Hebrew scriptures. A psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bob. Good morning. I would love to have all of the young people join me up front today. Andre, it's so good to see you. And that narwhal sharp shirt is pretty amazing. Come sit all the way up here by me, right down here. Ben, how are you? Good to see you. Eleanor, it's lovely, a pleasure. Caden, good to see you. Haley, Cecilia, Matei, and Jonas, oh my goodness. I am so thankful to see you all today. It is so good to have a full top step. And it is almost Thanksgiving, Andre. And you know what? This week we talk a lot about things we're thankful for and what we're grateful for in our lives, right? Actually, at school, yeah. Oh my gosh, Andre, you're so ahead of us. He said he already made a Thanksgiving placemat with all the things he's thankful for. Well, you can help me with my message today. Seven things. Seven things? I love that. I love that. I can't wait. Will you tell me on our way walking to pageant? I want to hear all your seven things. Well, I was thinking, actually, Andre, 
that there are really five different ways to show we're thankful for someone, right? Okay, I was thinking one is telling somebody that you're thankful, or maybe writing it in a note, right? Okay, another way to say, if I'm really thankful for someone, I might give them a hug, because I'm really thankful. Like, oh, thank you so much, and give them a big hug. Um, a third way is you might make a gift. Maybe you draw a picture for a teacher you're thankful for, or maybe even if you have a party, you give your guests little gift bags to say thanks for coming to my party, right? Have you done that before? Another way, okay, so that's three ways. I was thinking a fourth way is spending time with someone. Like, thank you so much for what you did for me. I want to take you out for a meal. Let's, let's spend the day walking in the woods together, just to say thank you. Okay, another way. Do you have one? What's the way, Andre? You have an idea? What are you going to do next time? Next time we go to Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. Will you bring that in? That would be a gift to me to show me the things of all the things you're thankful for next time you come to church. I love that idea. And you know, the last thing I was thinking of something on the back. There's something on the back? You are so creative. I just love that. You know, the last thing I was thinking of, that a way you can show you're thankful, is by doing something nice for them. So that would be a way to say thank you to me, is by doing something nice, coming. Oh, and you're giving me a hug. You're just showing all the thankful ways today, Andre. I love it. You are living with thanks and gratitude. And we can do that by helping out. Like if somebody helped you, maybe when you weren't feeling well, maybe you could help them out when they're not feeling well and bring them a meal, right? We can share thanks in that way. So we're at church, and I was thinking, what about thanking God? Can we thank God in those same ways that we thank one another? Okay, let's think through. One was words, so we could pray to God, right? Two was hugs. You've got a good memory. Two was hugs. How do we hug God? Hug there. Okay. Any other ideas? Hugging across. Okay, there's some oh, symbols. Yeah. You could do like this. Hugging the air, hugging yourself. And I think really, when we're hugging each other, we're also hugging God, right? Because God taught us to love each other. So I think that that counts as a way to say thank you to God. Okay, three was making a gift. Let's think of ways. I've seen some gifts to God already in this service. I've heard the choir sing in our, our psalmist. Bob read the psalm, and talk, they talked about giving thanks to God through music. Art or poetry? What's your idea, Andre? Last Christmas, yeah. one of my family presents were placemat of the world. Ooh, you got a present of a placemat of the world. There are so many things to be grateful for around the world. Every, every, every place. Every place in the world? Yeah. Okay, that's where all we live, right? Yes. Yes, that is all and North America. An, Let, hey, Andre, and, can we? There's also an, and, and there are also yeah. More there, there are. We didn't get the. We didn't get a place for yeah. us. There are so many places to love in the world. Let's hear Ben's idea. Yeah, what's the fourth way? Giving gifts. Yeah. How could you give a gift to God? Just sharing who we are, right? God has given us a lot of gifts, and so we can do it. Hold on to that one, okay, bud? Okay, and so spending time with God. We spend time with God here in church, right, each week. I spend time, too, too, with God out in the woods. Or maybe even just sitting quietly, we could spend time with God. And the last one was gifts of service. And I think this is another one of those times where if we 
do loving things for one another, God feels that as a gift of thanks too, right? Because when we care for each other, we're loving God too. And I think with all this thanks, thankfulness, it sounds a lot like love. Because I think showing thanks is a lot like sharing love. Let's share a prayer together, okay? Dear God of giving, God of gratefulness, God of love, thank you for all you have given us, our earth, our loved ones, our food and shelter. Help us learn to find new ways to say and show we are thankful through the way we generously spread your love through the world. Amen. So now all the young people are going to get their coats on and head with Etta and me over to the church house for pageant rehearsal, pageant casting today. And I invite the rest of you to put a hand on your heart or give a peace sign and share the peace of God with one another. Good morning again, everyone. I'm just going to offer a few announcements. Um, the majority of them, or actually all of, all of what I'm about to describe is also in the bulletin, so please take a look there. Uh, but I will highlight first and foremost that today after worship, we will convene the, uh, the greening of the sanctuary. And thanks to Worship Music and the Arts for leading that. I believe that's, that's uh, they're under their leadership. Uh, secondly, I want to point out the interfaith Thanksgiving Eve service, uh, which will occur, of course, this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church across Raymond Park, uh, this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. And for those of you who are interested in uh, singing in the interfaith community choir, uh, you need to be uh, at the church at 5.30 p.m. For that, for that preparation. Uh, and then thirdly, I want to point out uh, that the First Congregational Church of Evanston Christmas party is scheduled for Saturday, de December 3rd from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, in the sanctuary. So put that on your calendars. It's, again, it's all of these events are described in the bulletin. Are there any other announcements from anyone? Okay, thank you. Good morning, I get triple mic. Okay, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Please hear the second gospel reading, reading from 1 Chronicles 29th chapter, verses 10 through 13, the New International Version. David's prayer. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, 
from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Here ends the reading of scripture. Well, good morning. It is a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to hear these heavenly voices. When I was parking my car, I could hear you through the windows. And you must know that your pastor is one of my most favorite people in the whole wide world. So I hope you, if you love him half as much as I do, he is well loved. Amen. Well, Thanksgiving is in a few days, and I don't know if you remember, prior to the pandemic, family Thanksgiving meals were losing their place in our hearts to shopping sprees. Do you remember back before the <laughs> pandemic? You could barely finish because the Black Friday sales were coming. And now that things have relaxed a bit, and some of us are trying to get back to that headspace. And if you look around, you can see it. I mean, we've been sequestered for so long, and now you can see evidence that a celebration of gratitude, again, is trying to be replaced by just good deals. It's called retail therapy. So in this season, how is Thanksgiving doing? I mean, is it deceased? Or has its death been greatly exaggerated? Will we really stop to take a moment to count our blessings or will we zip past it to get to that big consumer fest? Ah, Black Friday. The Apostle Paul must have wondered about this tension between what the earth values and what we're supposed to do as people of God when he wrote his letter to the Colossians, a group of Christians living along a main roadway in Asia Minor that is now called Turkey. They too were pulled between the values of their faith and the values of their culture as we still are today. And Paul, in a letter to the Colossians reminded them, warned them, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. I think these words ring true today, don't they? I mean, we know the philosophy and human tradition of trying to spend our ways out of whatever ails us. We know the human tradition of making the holidays an orgy of consumption that pulls us away from the, the pondering, the anticipation of hope waiting to be born, anticipating a light of consciousness breaking through the darkness of oppression and corruption. This is not new. This, this moving through the world, forgetting we are spiritual beings in a human realm. Forgetting too often who we are and whose we are. Paul asked them, and he asked us, why do you still live as though you belong to the world? I think that's a good question that we should ask ourselves every day, but especially during this time of thanksgiving. Now, the apostle is not scolding us or trying to make us feel bad about ourselves. In fact, Paul is reminding us. Because, you know, Paul is called the apostle of gratitude. 
with the phrase, be thankful, one of his recurring pleas. In fact, the New Testament scholar David Powell points out that the New Testament has 62 mentions of thanksgiving. And the Apostle Paul is responsible for more than three quarters of them. Do you know that he began most of his letters in the Bible with this urging towards thanksgiving to the church in Corinth? I always thank God for you. To the church at Ephesus, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. To the church in Philippi, I thank my God every time I remember you. In Philippians, I always thank God when I pray for you. Paul made sure that he let people in his churches and all the churches know how thankful he was for them. Because being a grateful person has benefits that can change your life. Being a grateful person will also enhance your relationships. Now, I know that's hard when you've been in relationships a long time to be thankful for your relationships. I mean, this is one thing I've noticed about some of my married friends. I know this doesn't apply to anybody here. But, you know, over time, sometimes they take each other for granted. I mean, somebody told this joke a few years describing marriage and said, you know, when you're first married, the husband sees his wife having a cold and says, oh, you don't look so good. You should go to the hospital. I know they don't have good food there, but I'll, I'll bring you in special food. And in the second year, he says, you don't look so good. I've called the doctor. Go lay down. I'll take care of the kids. The third year, he says, you know, you're not looking so hot. When you're done feeding the kids and cleaning up the kitchen, you need to go lay down. <laughs> in the fourth year, he says, would you quit walking around here barking and coughing? like a seal, you're going to give everybody your cold. The longer that we become familiar, sometimes the less thankful we are for each other. Just imagine how your relationships would improve if you just came home sometimes and just told your partner how thankful you are for all they do. I mean, they may just faint from shock, but just imagine how better your relationship would be? How better would your relationships be in the church or on your job if we, like Paul, expressed our thanks for each other from time to time? You know, even in the hard moments, the Bible says we should be thankful in all things, but, but holding thanksgiving in times of hardship and challenge is really difficult. I mean, it's hard to be thankful when hard times come, but we are told to be thankful even then nonetheless. I mean, we struggle to give thanks after a, the death of a spouse, or we, we, we try to be grateful when a child is sick, and we do our best to count our blessings when we lose a job, or fail a class, or suffer an injury or experience a crushing disappointment. But you know what? There is a way to do this. For even in the hard times, you can be thankful for the gifts of God that sustain us through the struggles of life. We can be thankful for children and friends and partners and good health and kindness and laughter and generosity and knowledge, even the gift of life itself. I mean, it's possible to be grateful for situations or people who are really problematic. I mean, be grateful for that bad relationship that made you reassess what you really needed to be happy. Be grateful for that awful boss that you had to work so hard to get away from so that you could thrive. Otherwise, you might have stayed in that spot and been calmly unfulfilled. Be grateful for that stress that made you seek out things in life to balance you and discover the beauty of 
meditation or writing or poetry or even running. Even being grateful for that health diagnosis that made you start eating right and be mindful of how precious time is. Yes, it's always so much to be grateful for. And well, but some of us just find it difficult to see our blessings. We expect good things, great things to come to them to come to us and when that doesn't happen well we're the opposite of being thankful we are dissatisfied you know the story is told of two friends bumping into each other on the street and one of them looked at very sad almost on the verge of tears and his friend asked what in the world has happened to you my friend and the sad fellow said let me tell you Three weeks ago, an uncle left and died and left me $40,000. And his friend says, well, that's a lot of money. And he says, but then two weeks ago, a cousin I never knew died and left me another 85000 free and clear. Friend says, sounds like you've been blessed. He said, you, you don't understand. Last week, my grand aunt passed away, and I inherited even more money. Now the friend is really confused. He's like, well, why do you look so sad? And he said, this week, nothing. <laughs> That's the trouble with receiving something on a regular basis. Even if it's a gift, we eventually come to expect it. That's kind of the entitlement mindset that has permeated American society at almost every level. You know, there's a Buddhist saying I love, expectation is the root of all suffering. Expectation is the root of all suffering because sometimes we live in a spirit of anticipation of what we feel we have coming to us, that we can't see what's already been provided. We have been so blessed in so many ways. We live in a land of plenty, and as a result, we too often become complacent, and many times we are completely unwilling to give thanks to anyone for anything, because we got it coming to us. And being bombarded daily with images of everything we don't have and everything that we are not doesn't help. There's a story told about Alex Haley, the author of Roots, and he had a visual clue to help him to remember to be thankful. He had this strange little picture hanging in his office, and it was a picture of a turtle on top of a fence post. And when asked, well, why would you have that picture there? He answered, every time I write something significant and somebody reads my words and tells me how great I am, I look at that turtle on top of the fence posts and remember he didn't get there on his own. He had help. That's the basis of thankfulness to remember that we got here with the help of God. We didn't get where we are by ourselves. The countless loves and prayers and angels that have come and ushered you and surrounded you, you didn't get where you are by yourself. With the help of God, they are the providers of every blessing we have. Psalm 24 and 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And when we say this, it reminds us that it is a privilege that God has loaned us everything we have. 1 Corinthians 4 and 7 says, what do you have that you did not receive from God? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not 
James 1 and 17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the creator of heavenly lights who does not change like the shifting sand. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Remember the old hymn when upon life's billows you are tempest crossed? When you are discouraged and thinking all is lost, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Being thankful and having gratitude isn't just a good idea. It has medical benefits. It strengthens your immune system. It improves your heart health. You have less inflammation, a healthier heart rhythm. Being thankful helps by decreasing the cortisol levels and perhaps increasing oxytocin, the bonding hormone. So just being thankful is a good muscle to exercise. And we endeavor to be grateful in acknowledgement that God, the sacred, the holy, is ever present in our lives, in our coming, in our going, in our sleeping, and in our waking. And if we look through life through this lens of not just gratitude, but understanding and looking for the mystery of God, anything might be a blessing in disguise. And then we come with thankful hearts in advance. Teresa of Avila urged us, look for God in the small details of your life, in the ordinary world, in the most insignificant acts that make your life easier or safer, or that might provide that one detail that may save the life of someone you love dearly. Let us pray. Lord, grant me the grace of gratitude, especially when I fail to see all that is good in my life, especially in those hard moments. I need to remind myself of all the many ordinary gifts in my life that are really not ordinary at all, but really true blessings. Holy One, I thank you for all you have done, for all you continue to do, and for all that is to come. Amen.
is now time to give our offering to the Lord. Will the ushers come forward. Let us read the prayer of dedication together. Risen Savior, responding to your love and grace, we offer our gifts of time, talents, and service. May our offerings feed the hungry, clothe the poor, quench the thirsty, and shelter the most vulnerable. This is the time that we share our prayers and concerns with the body of Christ. Please stand and let me know if you have a prayer concern or a joy that you would like to share with this community. Yes. For your brother, what's his name? For, brother, for your brother Carol, who is having health issues. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, prayers for my brother-in-law, Dan, who uh, is 
We pray for Dan, who is dealing with cancer. Prayers for healing for your upcoming surgery and for everyone that is taking care of you. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those in Colorado and for the perpetrators of the crime. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. On this day of transgender remembrance, we honor those lives as well. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For in the, all the suffering in Ukraine, oh Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. For traveling mercies for all on the roads and on the highways and in the air, oh Lord, hear our prayer. There was two over here. We pray for those who are alone this holiday season or estranged from their family members. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Joy for the Sandhill Cranes. Praise be to God, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. In the back. Yes, we pray for Brittany Granier, Gran, 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 and for all those who are prisoners unjustly. We pray that they could be set free. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the people in our grant who are standing up, for people who champion justice everywhere, for their courage. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your mother that she will get the health and the assistance and the medicine that she needs. And we offer prayers for your healing. And we pray for your strength and endurance. So, Lord, hear our prayer.
Anne? Yeah. We pray for Anne as she struggles with COVID. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Grateful to God for a wonderful moment that Anne was able to be present with her family mentally and spiritually. Oh Lord, we send prayers of gratitude. Hear our prayers. Well, let us pray. Lord, you poured the prayers of your people in. We are thankful for all that you've done, and we ask you to to care for those who are sick and who are struggling and those with broken hearts and broken spirits. Lord, we know that you hear their urging and we know that we are the angels that you have put in place to make them have so much easier. Lord, we pray for everyone that is suffering. We even pray, Lord, for those who are causing the suffering, Lord. You've taught us to it's not just good enough to pray for those who are like us. We pray that the perpetuators of harm, that their hearts be changed. We pray for this city. We pray for this nation. We pray for the ground that we walk on, for the air we breathe, for all your creation may flourish. This and all the prayers upon our hearts, prayers spoken and unspoken, we offer to let us all say, Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us in temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand to our feet as we sing our closing hymn. Now thanks be all our God. Number 643. <laughs>
people of God, as you go about your week, remember every day there will be not another day like today. We will never be gathered exactly like this again. The sun will never shine exactly this way again. We will never be sitting exactly this way again. So with grateful hearts, may the peace of God surround you, the love of God dwell within you, and the justice of God compel you. Go in peace and amen.